this is Leaves and Stone Lily Bells. This is sewing chat number nine. Just going to be an incredibly quick run through of all the things that I've sewn in the last sort of three months. We're going to do it Viv Mum style. If you don't know Viv Mum or Viv Mum sews, I'll put um, a link down below to her YouTube channel. She does these amazing videos and she does ones where she shows all the things that she's sewn in, so it's like 10 items in 10 minutes or something. So hop over to her channel and have a look, but this is a tribute to her because we're going to quickly run through everything that I've sewn in the last three months. So this is one I showed you the fabric for in one of my videos with some haul. Um, I knew exactly what I was going to make with this fabric when I bought it and it is the It to Stitch and it is the Llama Hoodie sweatshirt. It's a wonderful pattern, I love it. I'll just put that down there. Um, it has pockets. It has wonderful areas of colour blocking. I've just done a normal sleeve. I've done a hood. I've lined it with this funky um, sort of spacey fabric. And I made the ties. I wear this all the time. It is quite a nice shaped hoodie. Um, and yeah, and it has a piece on the back where you can do the yoke in a different colour. Sorry, my hair is in the way and the hoodie's in the way. And there we go. So this is the second one I have of this. The other one I made with a cow neck collar and was in blue and I think it's in one of my videos. So that's this one. Okay, so this is the Constellation Hoodie by Love Notions. This is my second version of this. Um, again, this is fabric that I've shown you from a haul video that I did. I knew exactly what I was going to make when I bought this fabric and this is it quite a long hoodie it's much more baggy I like to wear it on cold days I did the sleeves with the thumb holes which I do like and then you can wear them without which is fine it has a nice zip and then I put the fabric in the hood and it's just a nice one to wear it I've only made it out of a ponty so it is it is warm but it's it's quite it's not like a sweatshirt in fabric, but I do like to wear this one around the house and out and about and whatnot. So that's this one. My hair is going to progressively get worse as this video goes on. So this one is a, it's a semi fail because I made it too small and ended up having to give it to my daughter. So it is the Transformer jacket by Ellie and Mac. I think I got this when it was on the $1 uh, promotion. So if you sign up to any of Max newsletter, um, every Wednesday they send out an email telling you which patterns are on offer for $1 that week. Um, it's a great way to build your stash and a lot of their um, patterns are great everyday patterns. So this is the Transformer jacket. Again, it's another one for colour blocking. Um, when I bought the fabric, I sort of knew what I was going to do with it and this was it. So there we go. I couldn't quite get the right colour as it. It was this dark cream or it was white. It doesn't look quite so bad in the light. It's really showing up on the camera but it's, it's a wee bit darker. There's the back and the hood. And the good thing about this jacket, it's one of the reasons I wanted to make it, is that you can turn it into a bag. It's called the transformer jacket. So on the back you sew in a little pocket and a little pouch and you can fit it all in on itself and it turns into a rucksack. Eventually. And then you have a little rucksack in which to hold your jumper in. So my daughter has worn it. I would say it was one of her favourites um, because I had made it originally for me. Um, so she didn't really, I don't think she was a huge fan of the light colour. But I wanted it for the summer to wear just over dresses and stuff if I was out and about. But it does come in handy and useful. And there it is. That's that one. So this is the Melody Dolman by uh, Love Motions. There's the pattern. You can see that I've chosen two other fabrics to make them other, one, uh, other ones out of these. So these ones are quite good for stash busting. Quite good because... You need quite big pieces. 
it's not like um, a lot of people use the hunter tank for splash busting so if they've made something out of another fabric and they've got leftovers the hunter tank fits into those really well or the open cami and things like that so this does require a bit more fabric than that but you can do what I've done which is you can change the colour of the back so I didn't have enough of this this was a remnant that I bought um, ages ago um, I bought it really just for my daughter to play around with it and she didn't want it so um, I took it out of my stash and decided to make it into a top when I was making it I did think it was a bit bowling-esque but um, I quite like it now it looks nice with jeans it doesn't look very good with these trousers um, and you can also tie it off as the pattern says and have it a little tie at the front um, but I've just worn it done up with jeans um, I have snaps because I really want didn't want to do all of the buttons <laughs> so uh, the snaps are quite good and it's just nice to put over a long sleeve top I do wear it normally with a navy top because this is navy and I know this looks really bright on camera but it's not actually as bright in real life um, and I've just put black snaps in and uh, yeah I really like it it's just a nice shirt to wear um, I did have a problem when I washed it something must have ran in the wash that it was in and it ended up with lots of black splodges over it I was really miffed because I, I do like wearing this shirt and um, I bought some of the uh, it's like fabric repair it's called uh, run remover or something and I put this and soaked it for about an hour and a half in the run remover and it has taken all of that um, mystery dye out which I'm quite pleased about so that's this one I do like it very much so this is the next dress that I made. It is the Hepburn um, shirt waister dress. Uh, it's from Now and Then uh, Patterns. They are lovely patterns. I've also made the um, beach pajamas from these guys as well. They do sort of vintage inspired um, patterns. That's this one. And they get a nice big thick envelope with all the nice good quality paper and stuff inside. That's this one. I did originally make it with cap sleeves, um, but I decided to take the sleeves off and just have it as a, a sleeveless dress. I did actually do the buttons this time. So I put these nice little yellow buttons all the way down. And it has pockets. Um, I made it too late for summer in the UK. So I will wear it next year, but I'm really pleased with it and I will definitely make more. It's just a normal cotton that I made out of, which is quite nice to have a pattern that takes normal cotton rather than viscous or some other um, type of fabric. So I'm really pleased. Okay, here's the next dress. This is a vintage pattern my mum bought me. It's McCall's 3561. It's very nice. Um, they are single size, so this is a size 12. And um, what it had inside is some of someone's original fabric, I presume from the 1970s. It has that feel about it. Um, so I will keep that in the envelope. Um, did, I was very worried because I love this print. I bought this print in Spain um, a few years ago. And I didn't buy very much because it was quite expensive. And I couldn't decide what I wanted to do with it. I didn't have enough for certain designs. And then I thought, I'll try this and see if I can get it out of this. Um, and luckily I can just, just got it out of the two meters of fabric that um, I bought. It is a lovely pattern. I love the detail. So it just goes over your head and then you tie this strap around the back. It has a center front seam. Um, side seams and a back seam and I just think this little tie detail with the big collar sort of makes it really the contrast is really nice um, I sh I'm only 5'4 and a bit and I shortened the pattern by 5 centimetres on the shortened line thinking that would be enough but I ended up still taking off even more when I hemmed it 
So I quite often, if I hem something, and I've ended up taking off much more than um, I adjusted the pattern for, I put the bit that I took off inside so that next time it reminds me that I need to cut less. <laughs> but you can see, so I took off five centimetres plus what's that? That must be another five centimetres. So I must have taken 10 centimetres out of this pattern to get the length uh, correct. So I think they were very tall. <laughs> um, but I really like this one and I will definitely make it again. This is the next one. So this is the very, very famous um, Vogue 8577. Um, if you wish to see a tutorial for this, uh, Sean from Kittenish, Kittenish Behaviour does a full tutorial on how to make uh, this dress. This dress is amazingly fabric hung with grey. It takes five metres just to do the outside and then it suggests that you fully line it, which is another five metres. I've only lined the top, I didn't line the skirt, um, because 10 metres of fabric for a dress is an awful lot. It is a lovely dress, but I just, you know, by the time you add up the money, and I bought a very inexpensive fabric to make this dress because it needed so much. Um, so I don't think I'd ever use an expensive fabric to make this dress. <laughs> uh, so here it is. Um, I have worn, well, I will wear it with um, a black top underneath normally, I think. It's a little bit big in the waist, uh, but when I wear a top underneath, it, it's much better. I could wear a belt, I suppose, to bring it in, which is how Sham wears hers when she wears them. Um, I suppose there's room to have something to eat in it. Um, it is lovely. It has the biggest pockets in the world, and it has the biggest skirt. It is wonderful and swishy. Um, and yeah, I do really like it. Um, I could probably have done, so I did take the shoulders in. The shoulders were actually sort of out here on me. I must have narrow shoulders and, and not really realised. So I could have taken them in a bit more, um, but they're okay. And when I wear a black shirt, it's, it's less noticeable. And I think I will wear this one with a black top underneath normally. So here it is. It has an awful lot of um, closures down front. I again did snaps all the way down. And you need quite a few, I think, in order to keep it fully together. Um, I'm trying to remember how many I put in there. Oh, I did put a good, I think it's 12 or so. And I just really didn't want to do the buttonholes for 12. <laughs> Me and buttonholes are not the best bits of friends. Um, I would say I have probably a 60% success rate with buttonholes and I have had to unpick some buttonholes before. Um, so where possible, I might use snaps instead of buttonholes. Um, I have a machine and it does them, but it just doesn't do, it, do them very well. My daughter has a new sewing machine and I have been meaning to try buttonholes on her sewing machine to see if they do them any better than the one on mine does, but we'll see. I am making a coat at the moment, I have to use buttonholes for that. And I'm very scared. I might need a gin or something before I do those, just to get up the courage to do them on my coat. <laughs> so here it is, I do like it. Um, I will probably make it again. I might take it in the next one that I do. I will definitely take the shoulders in on the next one that I do, but I will wear this one. And I will wear it with the top underneath and black tights. So this is the Soulholic pattern and it is called, what was it called? This was the Salt Spring Dress. It comes in, sorry the crackle. It comes in short or long. I have made the long version. You can see I've already chose fabric to make another one. And this is the fabric. It's a very nice casual dress. I have made it Sorry, it's okay. I've had it, I did iron it, but I hung it in my wardrobe and it's all got smushed in my wardrobe. Um, I made it out of a viscose twill, so it is a little bit of a heavier fabric, because I thought this would be good for um, summer evenings, when I could put a cardigan over the top and it wouldn't get too cold. It's very, what's this, Romanesque toga sort of going on. 
Um, I really like it. It has an elastic waistband. Uh, the top half is lined and then you just tie the shoulders off. But it's nice. It's nice to swish around in. And I will definitely make more of this dress. So this is the um, Freya Bell wrap dress by Made Label Patterns. Um, I think I mentioned this in one of my other videos where I did a review of her other dress. Um, so it has a ruffle and an octave uh, cold shoulder look. So it's a wrap dress, which is tied here. And yeah, it's really nice. It is quite, as with the last pattern, it is quite an intensive make. It has a lot of self bias um, binding on it. That you have to make to go with the pattern and to do all the ties and all this and all of this is bound around the edges along here and then you have to put the little straps and the rings on but it's really nice I like wearing it and yeah I really like it it's nice to have in my cupboard so here's uh, the next one again I didn't finish this in time for summer so I didn't get to wear it mind I'll only wear it next year. So this is an old pattern and I have made this dress before. I have this in a blue flowery fabric. Um, it is new look 6557. If you can get this pattern it's a brilliant pattern. I, I really recommend it. You might be able to get it on Etsy or somewhere like that but I don't think it's in print anymore. It's a very uh, well fitted um, sort of bodice to the dress and then flares out into a skirt. Um, I have added more flares at the skirt. The skirt in the pattern is more um, straight down and I just flared it out as far as I could with the width of the fabric that I had. So I think I must have added, so the, the, the hem I must have added about another eight centimetres or so. Well, whatever I could get out of this uh, width of the fabric that I have. So it's not that big. But I really like it. Um, I think I will wear it a lot. So we come to the last of the things that I'm going to try on. Um, I made a swimming costume. It has been something that I've wanted to make for a long time and um, I just decided to get on and do it. So this is, uh, the top is a free pattern from Mood. It is called the Cordelia. I'll put a little note here um bikini so here it is i depending on how brave i feel i might put a picture in of me wearing the top when i was doing all the fitting and stuff um but i'm not sure so this was scraps that i had left over from a pair of leggings i made for my daughter and this was just some really thick um black like i got from uh, fabric land uh, the pattern is really good um the only thing I would say is I have a little bit too much. It was fine when I fitted it all, but when I did the final top stitching along here, it kind of made it bow out a bit, which was a bit annoying. But everything else about it is fine. And when I actually wear it and go swimming, um, it all sort of shrinks back in anyway, and you can't see that. It's only when it's dry that you can see there's a little bit of a bowing out. It flicks up a little bit when I put it on. So... It's a halter neck and uh, yeah I really like it. I did make the bottoms but as part of the, the bikini pattern but they were, oh God, they were awful. They were like up here they are full sort of short effect um, ones and I, oh, I, looked, I looked terrible in them so I ended up just going online and finding a pants pattern and making them out of that. So I will link the pants, the free pants pattern below um, and put a little label on the screen because it's completely fallen out of my head which one that I use but I just searched the pattern online so here are the, the pants. I have a few problems um, because I cut it wrong and then realised I didn't have enough fabric so I ended up having to put these little black bits in in order to 
have enough fabric to to do these pants because I'd already cut and done the other ones. <laughs> so there we go. And again on the back, I didn't quite have enough fabric again, so I had to put a join in here and here um, in order to get enough fabric. So there we go. That's my bikini that I made. I'm really pleased with it. Um, I did line it, so it is it is fully lined the top and the bottom, just to make it a bit more secure when I'm wearing it. And I didn't want any stretch on my bottom and uh, you know the print getting bigger <laughs> so that's that i'm really pleased and the last thing i have to show you is actually things that i've been making for my husband i'll just quickly get them these are my husband's lounge pants my husband loves bright colors and he wanted some trousers just to wear around the house that are really comfortable. And he wanted them in like the big baggy, I think we call them Harlem pants now, but you know, the Aladdin style trousers. <laughs> so I got this pattern from the charity shop and I decided to hack it into what he wanted. So we've had different versions of this pattern so far. This is the first version I made him and he's worn these a lot. So these are um, African wax print and cotton. And they've got a bit of a elastic on the ankle and elastic on the waist. So this was version one. And we had feedback from this version that then created version two. This is version two. He wanted the drawstring added and he wanted pockets added, so I put pockets in, and he wanted them a little bit slimmer in the leg and a little less elastic on the leg. So that was version two. We are now on to version three, which is the latest pair, which is the final, final pattern. <laughs> Again, with the drawstring and the elastic the pockets, this time they, and you can't see it very well, but they are a lot thinner in the leg and again with a little bit of elastic in the um, ankle cuff. So that's those. I have another three pairs to make for him. <laughs> See, look at some of these, aren't they gorgeous? We went to um, a shop in uh, Reading to get these. They are lovely. beautiful. So sometimes I have to pattern match and sometimes I don't. So with the first ones I pattern matched and I got the bands in the right place and things like that. The second one because it was flowers I didn't bother and the third one I pattern matched so that the rows of flowers were um, even all the way down rather than having them all mismatched. This one I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to lay it out and see because it has this stripe I kind of think that I'm going to have to pattern match it in some way. And then this one. This one's got a very different texture to the rest. I have washed them all um, because they are quite stiff when you buy them. But this one's got like a satiny texture to it. Look at that. Aren't they beautiful? They're lovely fabrics. Um, I think I have to think about pattern placement and stuff like that when I do this one. So that's it. That is everything I've sewn in the last few months. Um, I am currently sewing a jacket, a coat, um, which is taking up all the free time. Um, it's, it's turned out to be quite a challenge, <laughs> but I will show you that next time. But it was nice speaking to you. If you have any comments or questions, I know I've rushed through all of the patterns, but if you do have a comment on one of the patterns, please put it there. Ah. If you do have a question about one of the patterns, please put it in the comments and I will respond. Um, I just wanted to get through them quite quickly because there were a lot of makes and I didn't want you to be here for two hours watching me wax lyrical about each pattern. <laughs> but take care and I'll speak to you soon. Happy sewing!